Dungeons and Ruins is the latest installment in Kobold Press's new Campaign Builder series. Dive deeper with this step-by-step -step guide to building dusty vaults and lost tombs ripe for exploration in your Tales of the Valiant and 5th edition games. Within its pages, you'll uncover the tools to create memorable dungeons, lost cities, and haunted barrows all with secrets to uncover and treasures to be won. With exciting character options, deadly new traps and hazards, ready-to-use curses, monsters that do more than wander, and a horde of new options for your Game Master's bag of tricks, the magic of delving into the unknown returns to your tabletop games. Together with a beautiful map folio featuring a dozen underground and abandoned sites, you can bring new meaning to Dungeon Crawl. Make exploring deadly tunnels and lost caverns exciting once again, with options inspired by classic D&D elements like dungeon puzzles, hex crawls, and hazards that truly test your player's mettle. Epic stories come to life with new druid, cleric, and mechanist subclasses for players, plus options for the talents, gear, and magic to survive their valiant journeys into the darkness of dungeons and ruins. Explore the unknown in your games with Campaign Builder, Dungeons and Ruins, available now on Kickstarter. Yeah, there we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kobold Chats. My name is Kendrick or Kendo, whichever you prefer. I use they, he pronouns. And hey, it's Wednesday again. We're here. We're, we're having a good time. And I hope, well, I'm having a good time. I hope you're having a good time as well. It's the middle of our week, the middle of our day. And I hope that you can, you know, you're having a, a restful day, you know. At this point in time, you're relaxing. Maybe you're on lunch. Maybe you're just hanging out at home. Maybe you're listening to this while you're working. And that's okay. I won't tell your boss. Uh, I'm, I, yeah, you know, I, why, why would I tell on you? It's fine. Um, <laughs> but I hope you're all having uh, a, a good time. Um, because uh, we're going to have a great time today uh, when I'm talking with uh, designer Michael Wellum. Uh, once again, a uh, second time here on Cobalt Chats with me at the very least. Um, and we're going to be able to, 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 talk, to talk a little bit about Dungeons and Ruins and his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, work on it. Sorry, my brain just kind of futzed out there for a second. But hey, what are you going to do? Um, but before we get to that, uh, just a brief bit of housekeeping. Hey, if you don't know what Dungeons and Ruins is, well, first of all, have you been living under a, a rock? If so, I hope you can get out from under that rock, because I, I can't imagine that it's very good there. Um, but uh, <laughs> Dungeons and Ruins is the newest in the campaign builder series uh, by Kobold Press. Uh, I just completely put in the wrong, uh, <laughs> just completely put in uh, the wrong thing there in Twitch, but uh, I'm putting both in Twitch and in our Discord chat right now. And if you're watching the VOD of this uh, on YouTube, it's in the description that goes to the Kickstarter for Campaign Builder Dungeons and Ruins. Campaign Builder has been a series that has given game masters and players the tools to be able to do all sorts of things with cities and towns and uh, castles and crowns. And now Dungeons and Ruins, which doesn't rhyme, but will be as good, I, I promise you. Um, because it's, I know, at least for me as a game master, uh, running dungeons is like the hardest thing for me. I'm very bad at mapping dungeons and, p and figuring out what to put in there. It's just not my go-to style. So I books like these, which Cobalt Press is great at, and making basically huge toolboxes for both players and GMs. Uh, I will be personally pulling a lot from this uh, myself. Um, as far as running exploration and running dungeons and like finding new ways to get the most out of those dungeons and those monsters so uh i think you all will enjoy it as much as i know i'm going to enjoy it um speaking of which where are we at on this kickstarter so yeah we have 14 more days uh, of this kickstarter starting from here so uh, starting from the wednesday that this is being recorded um or <coughs> not just well it's being live streamed whatever 
We have 14 more days, and we are already at $213,000 and some change, uh, which is absolutely amazing, well over our, our, uh, our original goal. And that's thanks to a lot of you, which is amazing. Like, I, like, what else can I say other than it's amazing that you all are able to be here and 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 a get this super cool book but also continually supporting kobold press and like the the work that we do to help give you tools that make your games better hopefully and so thank you for that being at two hundred thousand does mean we have unlocked quite a few stretch goals we've gotten the form fillable dungeon tracker which is basically just a character sheet for your dungeon which is great as someone who's really bad at notes or i should say my notes are scattered across like three different books and like a google doc somewhere having a tracker that all of that information that i'm going to need to be able to run that dungeon is just like right there is so it's it's the same reason why a person has a character sheet right it's great um, we've gotten the pro design seminar which uh will have uh brian suskind tom cardos Steve Winters, uh, Steve Winter and Aaron Roberts coming up May 17th, the week after Cobalt Con? Yeah, that's the Friday after Cobalt Con, which is oh, next week, which, <laughs> which feels wild to me. Um, but the Pro Design Seminar, if you want to sit down, listen to some of the minds behind Dungeons & Ruins, talk about what go went behind it, the philosophy and like the kind of technique behind it, well, back the kickstarter and you'll get access to it um uh, at one hundred and fifty thousand, we unlocked dun the dungeon tables pdf which is just going to be more content for you it's just more it's just tables and tables for your dungeon which who doesn't like a good rollable table they help make everything so much easier who who you don't need to do you're a low prep gm like <laughs> myself pull up a bunch of tables roll some dice you've got a good thing there that you can then weave together with your own imagination. Uh, at 200,000, we unlocked Advanced Treasures and Worthy Rewards preview PDF, uh, which is a, a preview into the, the book, the Dungeons & Ruins book, so you'll be able to get a little sneak peek of the treasures and worthy rewards that lie within it. Um, and our next one at $250,000, which we haven't reached quite yet, but we're not terribly far away from, we could definitely reach it within those 14 days. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, you'll get um, the Regal Trove, which is a 32 page uh, PDF adventure by Ben Eastman, who I see is in our, in our chat right now. So you get to that guy, the guy in our chat, who uh, you can uh, well you don't you don't have to bully him to do it because he will just do it, but <laughs> he'll do it only if we can get to that two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So hey, go tell your friends, GMs, players, any because there are there are going to be uh, uh, subclasses uh, and uh, adventuring items and, and gear and stuff that your players are going to be able to use as well. So it's not just a book for GMs; it's also for them. Uh, as well so all i'm saying is it's gonna be a good book and if you want to get it at the cheapest you're going to be able to get it back and get on the kickstarter right now is kind of a good move in my personal opinion i can't force you to do anything except tell you what could be a good decision and i think this is a good decision but you know whatever if i haven't sold you yet already maybe this interview will help uh will, will help sway your mind so without further ado i would like to invite thank you for joining me mike hello how's it going oh uh doing pretty well how about you i'm doing all right and i'm Good. gonna be doing better hopefully after <laughs> during our conversation uh, for <laughs> anyone who isn't already familiar with you, uh, let them know who you are. Oh, hi, I'm Mike Wall. Uh, I've uh, been freelancing for Cobalt Press for over 10 years now. I uh, don't know the exact number, but uh, I do a lot of monster design. Uh, and you could find me on the blog with the Tome Unbound Unleashed Unrestricted series. And I just wrapped up the Tome Unrestricted series with mm -hmm. the Tetzel Worm uh basically just picking apart the monsters and having uh 
adding new abilities or changing up abilities to to make some surprises for your your players who may have memorized the the uh, the monster books um, and also extracting some magic items and spells uh, uh, that uh, were kind of uh, inspired by the monster. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, now that oh go ahead. No 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 please oh, continue. Yeah. Now that that's over, I have another thing that uh, delves into the monster vault. Um, a slightly different tack, and I'm um, looking forward to that coming out, but I don't know if I can say anything about it. <laughs> oh, we love, we love a secret here. <laughs> <coughs> um, uh, hopefully uh, that audio is a little bit better for you, uh, Deputy. Thank you for letting me know. Um, but yeah, uh, talking, uh, talking about your work on like Tome Unleashed and, and, uh, and Tome uh, Unbound, Unbound um, I, that kind of, I think, goes into what uh, the the first thing that I want to talk to you about, right? Um, okay. There are a lot of tools, right, that the GM has at their disposal whenever they're making an adventure, a dungeon, or whatever, right? You've got monsters, you've got the setting, you've got, you know, magic items and tools, curses, hazards, wh whatever you want to use, a lot of which are, are in this book, right? Um, but when you have all these tools, right, to try to make... Uh, uh, immersive and like engaging encounters there's so much that can be used especially in a game that is a lot a lot of tools moving towards combat and going into encounters right and there is there's a balance right of trying to figure out okay how much is too much are we doing this too much like is this just feeling like a slog at this point like are my players just like oh, okay we're doing this again we gotta ah oh, it's another one of these or like another like there's so much right how do you find a balance between all of these tools at your disposal to be able to like make your combat and your encounters like feel satisfying rewarding and like not just like another thing that we have to get through um, i don't know if i've uh, actually uh, found the magic balance or anything like that <laughs> uh, but <laughs> there are some things that i try to do um i i do definitely try to vary encounters uh, and to to the point where certain characters can shine and uh, you know, it's or or you know, you have to use different tactics and things like that. There's only so many times that uh, you know you can fight the eighth series of or the X series of orcs in a row mm -hmm. and keep it exciting. So just try to vary it up. You know, maybe throw a a, a zombie in there or or a news uh, or a trap. Uh, so there's that. Um, I try to describe things as you know the monsters do things, especially on critical failures and critical hits, mm -hmm. or or spectacular you know deaths, uh, or get in, get the players involved in that. You know, to have them describe how they how they dispatch the the boss or something along those lines. Um, and then uh, I also have learned a couple of things not to do. Um, uh -huh. Don't put your don't put your player characters uh, in a funnel. If you've got them in a five, if you've got them in a five foot corridor, all the time, it gets really they get really annoyed that they can't move around. So, you know, every now and again, restricting movements, you know, fun, but just keep keep uh, things open so they can maneuver around and and it's not a lineup of monsters going up against the lineup of monsters like you're in you know one of the older final fantasy games or something like that um <laughs> yeah uh and then uh, the other thing is know when to get out um if you're in the if you're in a combat and it's pretty clear that the uh the characters are going to wipe the floor with the monsters rather than you know, unless there's going to be something significant that that might happen, or the monster has some kind of gotcha ability or something like that, just call it and and, and narrate the 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 deaths of the the rest of the monsters, or have them flee or something like that, so that we're not you're not sitting there for ten more minutes rolling d twenty d eight then and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of uh, 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 uh variety like like varying things up and also like letting the players like have a part of 
that oh yeah seems. yeah yeah it's that's definitely uh the yeah that's definitely a fun thing for me and and i've noticed for other players is just have someone having someone describe what they're doing in combat especially if it's it, you know an encouraging weird or uh just kind of using the environment or something like that you know if if, if someone wants to swing off the chandeliers uh you know in a in the ballroom go for it uh you know just describe <laughs> how that's going to happen i'm i'm if it's a if it seems like it's a particularly difficult thing i'll have you roll and then and then there might be some entertaining results depending on your role <laughs> yeah no that's really fun i yeah no absolutely that makes a lot of sense um uh, uh we we have a question here from rawlings warren um so some people say uh would say that the story is the thing right and dungeons are right. maybe a little too limiting how do i make the dungeon the story as far as like making the players engage with it not just like another thing that they're doing but like a part of the narrative that they're building towards ah um there's a if you're making your own dungeon you and and kind of go into this a little bit i think there are other chapters that do too mm -hmm. you definitely want to have a reason for the dungeon to exist uh it might be a, a layer for a dragon and the dragon's just sitting at the bottom of the uh well not sitting but resting at the, the bottom of the layer with all their treasure and has set up all of these traps and monsters and things like that you know as a gauntlet for you to go through mm -hmm. and you or or it might be something like you have warring factions within the, within the dungeon you decide to have something along those lines and you the characters might have uh influence in how that uh that factional warfare will go mm -hmm. in the dungeon and ultimately decide which boss you're going to fight that's ooh, i think that's really fun because it gives like it gives it gives the players a lot of it adds like a level of like kind of politics to what would like what i think a lot of people tend to just feel like ah we're like delving a dungeon you know yada 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 their monsters were fighting yeah. but you have to like start making decisions and like those those complex like okay who do we help is this person's like reason for being here and doing this thing better than this person who's gonna help <laughs> us? like there's there's a lot there and especially when you start doing it with like groups uh like into like with like factions that like people normally wouldn't like when you're doing it with like a tribe of like goblins that are in here that are like probably have a good reason they aren't harming any like they aren't hurting anyone outside of here but they're like we're doing our thing here but there's also this other group that just showed up and now they're messing up all of our stuff you know right yeah some some wizard popped in there and decided to open up a portal to the the 11 hells or something like that and <laughs> and you know maybe maybe you've got to usher these goblins in to you know or, or rally the goblins to help you fight fight off these demons right. <laughs> so you can get to the wizard and shut things down <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like that's um and uh i think that actually kind of goes to one of the things you wrote about in the book talking about like the ecology of a dungeon right the way in which like the things that live in it are all connected with each other and like have to exactly yes uh for like in your mind what is like i guess can you do can you talk a little bit about like what is a dungeon's ecology and like why does okay. it matter yeah. there's there's a few aspects to a dungeon ecology when you, especially when you're thinking about it in terms of the game there's the very basic aspect of you know the the um hierarchy of needs um you got to have you know room or you know a place where you can sleep uh, a, a shelter you can have food and water and you've got to consider that for you know the monsters that you have if you've got humanoids that are populating the dungeon they're going to have to have a source of food and water and a place to sleep if you've got undead you don't have to worry about that so much uh mm -hmm. so you've got the base level ecology and then uh underneath that you do have the kind of interplay between all the monsters so and, and essentially you know you can play with this as you as you want uh some players don't really care or, or are able to uh kind of you know check their um uh you know suspension of disbelief at the door yeah. and and will allow you to do whatever you want in the dungeon but sometimes you'll get stuck you'll get stuck in a game where someone will be like well this doesn't make sense 
why why don't why isn't there a kitchen why is why aren't <laughs> there have latrines been yeah. yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so you have to consider you know that's so that's the basic level but then you go down and then you have the interaction between the monsters mm -hmm. so I, I i you know i know uh tales of the valiant doesn't really do alignments but you know you'll have if you have opposing groups you need to have a reason why they haven't tried to attack each other why you were not walking into this a middle of a, a battle between gnolls and, and goblins uh because they're fighting over you know the the territory while you're fighting goblins and then you turn around and 15 feet down the uh, corridor you're fighting goblins or gnolls you know <laughs> so there's there's some considerations there where you have to decide why are these monsters working together and it could be that the boss is a very powerful boss and has basically said if you don't um if you don't work for me if you don't work together nicely you're going to be disintegrated and the, then they'll do that mm -hmm. but that that gives the players uh, another inroad and maybe they'll be like well if we liberate you from your boss maybe you can do this and this for us you know um, so there's the kind of this social ecology, I guess there's an environmental ecology and there's kind of a social ecology in a dungeon. Yeah, that's, and I, there's, I, f I feel like there's a lot of ways that those kind of mix together and like talking about like bringing a story to a dungeon, like there's so much story that can come from like, and so many hooks that can come from like talking about the not just like yeah the social ecology right we're like oh we have factions yada 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 and like they're like yeah come against each other but like even the natural ecology and like something disrupting that balance may cause a, a, a shock wave of other stuff to start going out and like then that's when you have towns be like hey i need adventures because these monsters started coming out of nowhere figure out why oh, right yeah yeah yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I mentioned that in the ecology. I, I mentioned underwater. You know, if you've got a lot of water in your dungeon, you're going to have things that that will swim or breathe water. And, and to your point, you know, you could have a dungeon that is just perfectly dry, clear out, and then through some calamity, it starts flooding and driving all the all the creatures that can't breathe water or can't swim mm -hmm. above above ground. And you got to figure out, oh, what's going on? Yeah. And then maybe, you know, maybe there's an Aboleth or something like that that's taken over the, the flooded dungeon, you know? Oh, and you, you, <laughs> you're like, oh, well, I didn't expect that. You know? yeah. yeah. And that's really cool. Yeah, because I think, like, there's... I think that's something that a lot of early... Especially me, right, when first, like, getting into it, right, is dungeons feel like they have there's so much space there in a dungeon for like a lot of the things are like a lot of the things that people are looking for and like uh when they're doing like an urban campaign where it's like oh i'm just mostly going from city to city you know or town to town doing all of these things where like you can still have so much of that you can have political intrigue exploration like all of these like world like uh, all of these different kinds of things that that we see that we seem to just see outside of the dungeon can also exist inside of it as well right and uh, uh the d you know um the d1 through 3 series from way back when that that's kind of imprinted on my brain a little bit cuz you have all all the all the drow mm -hmm. in there and you've got you've you can make you can make alliances and uh, sometimes they're they're not the best alliances or the, they're, you know, you're, you're kind of dealing with the devil a little bit to, uh, you know, leverage something to, to get your, uh, to achieve your goals. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there's, there's opportunities for that in an underground uh, or a dungeon setting. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's you know, so cool. you, why, I, yeah. You, why couldn't you have like a marketplace in, in, in part of the dungeon? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Why not? Why, why, why couldn't you? That's <laughs> Like I'm thinking now of like an underground market that is just like pe merchants having to hire adventurers. Like, hey, I I gotta get to this place. There's this big, there's a big event. There's gonna be so many, like this is the prime selling time. I need to get there. Help me take me yes. to this dungeon so I can right. get to this. And and the marketplace is you know neutral. You, you know you 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 could see everything that basically lives in the dungeon in this marketplace. Mm -hmm. And there are rules where. You know, nobody nobody does violence, mm -hmm. uh, and they're you know most most creatures most uh, abide by those rules. <laughs> yeah, 
but you know that opens up some some avenues for some some encounters or adventures is you know somebody might be planning an assassination or something like that and you've got to you know your your characters have to stop it or you know yeah. or they might be the they might be the targets of the assassination who knows right <laughs> oh, that's so cool um but uh mo- moving on from the the ecology and talking a bit more about the actual creatures themselves right um, yes. You have uh, you have a section in the book about picking the perfect monsters. Um, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's about? Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, yeah. Again, uh, the ecology plays into that because uh, you want to have uh, your monsters reflect your ecology. Right. Again. Uh, so, but then there, then you get into the kind of nitty gritty of what kinds of monsters you're going to have. Uh, so. You know, uh, you have kind of three general levels of monsters. You get your minions, you've got your lieutenants, and you've got your your bosses. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then you've got the occasional just random monster that's wandering through or something like that. You know, just is just some purple worms just be bopping through the dungeons, just tunneling its way through, <laughs> and. <laughs> It's not really answering to anybody, but you have to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> Just hanging out. It's like, and that becomes a normal thing for anyone in here. Like, oh, yeah, hold on. We got to wait. It's going to come through. It takes about five minutes. It'll be fine. Exactly. Um, so, uh, and uh, this, this is, again, kind of to taste, but generally, you're going, you're in your, when you're in a dungeon level or a section of a dungeon where you have your boss, you're going to fight the minions first, then you're going to, you know, fight the lieutenants, and then you're going to fight the boss. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, uh, you can you can definitely change that up. I mean, it would be pretty exciting, maybe, to just throw the you know the the characters walk down to the next level, and oop, boom, there's 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 the boss, there's the boss of the level, <laughs> just, just waiting for you. <laughs> you kill the boss, and then the rest of it is all of the lieutenants and minions going, "Hey, you killed our boss!" <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, you know, then, you know, you just kind of have to decide what their reactions are going to be. Are they going to be upset? Are they going to, is there going to be infighting to decide who's going to be the new boss? Mm -hmm. Uh, Are they going, are are they just going to scatter because (laughs) the boss, you know, they're not, they don't have to worry about the threat of the boss anymore. Mm -hmm. And they, they are worried about the, the, the people who just killed their boss. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Uh, So, and again, it's just kind of back to that kind of social ecology of the dungeon you've got so your bosses are going to select minions and lieutenants that will follow their orders or execute their orders Mm -hmm. uh without worrying about you know betrayal uh or or they might do they might and i I talk about uh kind of uh, selecting monsters by theme Mm -hmm. you might have a uh you might have a cult that's devoted to some kind of ooze demon and uh so they're going to have a lot of oozes in there and not very many you know um non amorphous creatures other than other than themselves mm-hmm. and even then they might be tinkering with their own bodies to you know modifying their bodies so they can you know take on the form of of the the thing that they the worship um so uh yeah um you've got a lot of different avenues to ch- to go to to choose from and uh, one of the other things is, if you, even if you have a theme, or you know, if you got a whole bunch of undead or something like that, there's nothing saying that you can't have, uh, you know, a lich or a vampire with you know spellcasting ability or magic items summon something that's unexpected to to the to the uh, you know the characters or the players even, you know, mm-hmm. so they're expecting you know zombies and ghouls and wraiths and whatever, and and you're like, and then the the lich or whatever that's in charge of the whole dungeon says well here how about a uh how about a an earth elemental <laughs> just to <laughs> shake know, things up or, a little bit yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's so and especially like because i think that also like talking about like how bosses like use like lieutenants and like minions and like uh, uh and how they like 
they're choosing those things for specific reasons even the things that go outside of theme right you can find ways yeah. to like make that like the they why did they bring in earth elemental maybe they have to dig something right like maybe they're like right. carving out caverns and then you get back into that like okay things are being chosen for a reason like the everything is connected to each other and because of those connections you can find story and hook to be able to like have some way for your characters to engage with it in a way that isn't just a bag of hit points i need to, to right. get rid of Ex yeah <laughs> yeah that's and so yeah cool. the, you know it's it's fun to throw something like that and then have the players go why is that why was that what was that doing here why was that there mm -hmm. and of course you know um sometimes i try and sometimes <laughs> i fail to pay that off <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it happens, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So not everyone's gonna be a grand slam, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that's really that's really interesting, and it seems like a lot of like a lot of what you're talking about is setting up like every tool and everything that you're using, right? From your boss to your lieutenant to minions uh, to the location and like the ecology is setting up a question almost of like why is it like this. And the way that you bring story to it and the way that you make it matter to your characters is giving the answer to why and thinking about it and like how like, OK, if this is true, then this might also be true. And if that's true, then this is true. So if this happens, then this might happen to this and then that will happen to this. And like the domino effect of like everything, everything being connected, which is kind of how the real right. world works. Exactly. And, uh, you know, and then it's more of the kind of trying to get the more positive and fun questions rather than more of the, why is it working like this? I cannot, I can't go forward because I don't understand why this dungeon is working like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So for GM, you just, when you're making it, you have to sit down and, and you have to ask the question before your play. You, especially if you know who your players are and you know the kind of players they yes. are, you can sit down and go, okay, what's Jim going to say <laughs> about, <laughs> what's the first question Jim's going to ask? So I already have an answer for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is good. Which is very good. Because, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've been in games where it's basically, uh, it, things ground to a halt because we were we had some fundamental questions about what was going on <laughs> where, you, where you sit down and the, the boss is there and it's like oh you finally here to stop you're here to stop me they go hey actually quick question a couple of rooms back we ran into this thing why was that there yeah, there was there was there was an orc in a in a five foot square room, and it was just sitting there. Why? What was the deal with that? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I kind of like the, the idea of a party of adventurers. Like, hey, we're doing a quick dungeon audit. Um, why is any of this like this? <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, but uh, to, uh, moving on from that, we, now now we know about the picking of the monsters, right? Let's yes. talk about combat scenarios, if and when it ever comes to combat, uh, especially okay. when we're dealing in dungeons, which don't necessarily have to be like dark underground caves or like ruins or something, but many times are, right? Um, you uh, in the book, you you have some unique combat scenarios and like yes. ways in which to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to to uh, to navigate those. Right, um, and yeah, a lot of it is you know some GM advice, and a lot of it is kind of mitigating uh, player frustration. <laughs> uh -huh. yes. So you know, if you've got your human, you you get your party of all humans. And they're fighting in the dark all the time. They're going to get uh, the players going to get a little little frustrated that they they don't have any kind of you know way to see the monsters. But meanwhile, because you're trying to fit your monsters in your ecology, of course they can see in the dark without any problem. Mm -hmm. So they have a a keen advantage over the player characters. Um, so I I do cover a little bit of things where it's like if. The characters have been uh, fighting in the dark for a while. Consider um, giving them a little bit of a way to basically use their, apply their other senses, you know, hearing, smells, uh, 
um, touch uh, and and give them a chance to kind of uh, over you know um, bleh, override the, mm -hmm. the need for you to have sight. Yeah. Um, so there's a little bit there's a little bit of that and. You know, I'm not sure if this will if this made it will make it through the edits or not. But I, you know, introduce uh, you know, and it might get moved. I don't know. I introduce a talent, uh, so you know, basically allows you to fight in dark, you know, constant darkness, or you know, with, if you're blind or whatever. So, yeah. um, without without having to take a disadvantage or become or have others um, have advantage against you because mm -hmm. you can't see them. You know that you have some kind of sixth sense almost oh, that's to, cool. to 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 see them, mm -hmm. um, and then there's uh, the combat. There's combat in uh, small spaces, and you know in your dungeons you're going to have your your kind of vermin and vermin folk. Mm -hmm. You're going to have oozes that can get around any anywhere in any way, mm -hmm. um, and you're going to find yourself. And then uh, this goes back a little bit to what I said with the funnel thing try to tr try to balance how how often you have a fight like that yeah. because what will happen is you'll get a bottleneck and you'll have one one character usually your fighter that's in the front who can do the the fighting and everyone else is just kind of waiting their turn mm -hmm. uh, so try to limit those uh fights but of course you want to have them because you know you want to you want to have you want to showcase the, the monsters that can fight in those conditions. Yeah. Um, and in that particular case, I, I suggested a magic item that allowed the, the characters to fight in confined spaces. Mm -hmm. So like they could share a space or, and, and uh, kind of like uh, the, the, the swarming, not the swarms, but the swarming ability, like with the, the rats, yeah. uh, the rat folk, uh, where they could be in this, in the same space and they have advantage on their attacks and stuff like that with this through this magic item. Um, so, and then uh, there's a discussion about uh, rough surfaces. Uh, dungeons are full of little holes and and uh, right. stalagmites, and, yeah, yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah. of you know trip hazards and things like that all around. Um, but I, I, that's one of those things where, so so I have I had I have a little bit of kind of mechanical information about that if you want to do something like that where if your your character the pc is charging into the room they'll have to make a, a dex save to avoid tripping and, and falling mm -hmm. but by the same token even the monsters that live in the area and know about these trip hazards if they're in the heat of battle they might also trip and fall yeah exactly <laughs> if they're in a hurry mm -hmm. uh but you know I, I i i talk about that and you know say well okay your your home monsters will have advantage on those those saves mm -hmm. and i also um talk about more than just the floor you know you're gonna have rough surfaces on your walls and ceilings and a lot of times in in dungeons you're gonna have things that can crawl on the walls and crawl on the ceilings and, uh, and attack from there. Loses. And yeah, 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 yeah. And and your and the uh, you know uh, player characters will have you know uh, uh, access to spider climb and things like that, so mm -hmm. they can do that too. But you know, just keep those things in mind that yeah, there's good. It's probably actually more likely you're gonna have rough surfaces <laughs> on the walls and the ceilings. Yeah, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's um, like it seems uh, like. Going back to your like one of the first points, right? Talking about like uh, variability and like like these are a lot of ways that like you can spice things up, right? Make things feel like you uh, doing something in a small space or like doing something in the dark. You have to engage with it more than just okay, yeah, I run up to them, I swing my sword, I roll damage. You yes. have to like okay, how am I gonna go about? Okay, who's in the front of us in this? Like we know we're about to go into this tunnel. There, we can hear that there's someone on the other end who's in the front who's in the back what's our goal or do we want to like kind of smoke them out like it gives so much it gives the players a chance to go okay how do we want to go about this right in a way that's really yeah. cool I so think. yeah and exactly the you know the players can plan ahead for they're, they're they're you know 
they go to an area and they see, oh, wow, this is supernaturally dark because, uh, <laughs> you know, magical darkness and, you know, our dark vision doesn't even work in that. Yeah. And, oh, whoops, we don't have light spells. So uh, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> are we are we going to retreat and maybe, uh, you know, <laughs> memorize some light spells so that, yeah. you know, we can cancel out this darkness or are we going to? How we or how are we going to handle this? You know, right. right. And then they can even, if they want, use it to their advantage. If they can find a way to trick something into the ma- the the magical dark room that those other creatures' dark vision also doesn't work and stuff like that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Which is really cool. And and then the uh, then there were two other things that uh, there are two other environmental things that I threw in there. Uh, I one of the things I do like is having you have your hazards and traps. Um, so you have to, and again, that's kind of like your, the, the trip hazards and things like that. You have your traps. The monsters know about the traps if, if they're layered in there. So they know how to avoid them or know how to trigger them. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's possible, again, like you, you mentioned earlier, that the players might figure out, you know, they might be able to suss something out with the trap and go, oh, hey, I can lure something over here and trigger this trap and catch them in, in the trap. Yeah. Uh, and then, then the other thing along with that is, uh, you know, have have destructible areas. Dungeons aren't always the most sturdy uh, places, mm-hmm. and things are going to you know, have you know, have rock slides and and falls, and you have uh, ground that's just going to give way. So mm-hmm. I, I talk a little bit about how we can maybe you know blow up some some uh, caverns uh, I love accidentally the or on purpose. <laughs> Yeah, Love and, the and create your own pit traps. Yeah, <laughs> that's. And then the uh, the final thing is, you know, the the other dimension or the one dimension is time. Mm-hmm. So, if you have, you know, and, and this is something you have to work closely as as GM, you have to work with your players a little bit to make sure that they understand that. Oh, by the way, you're on a, you're on the clock. Mm-hmm. If you don't if achieve this you know finish this combat or get to the other side of the room or whatever by the time you know a minute or 10 minutes is up something bad is going to happen something something you do not like is going to happen so i discussed that a little bit and maybe a well you had a partial success so it's not quite as bad it's still bad but it's not quite as bad because you you managed to get this far during the the time yeah 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 we just got uh, a question in the Discord. Um, uh, they're wondering, uh, what do you think is a good number of rooms in a dungeon? And maybe a bit more specific of, uh, of a question. Uh, what is your favorite monster type, monster or type of monster to put in said dungeon? Oh, okay. Um, well, I, I, I think I, I think I might have played, uh, showed my hand. I'll answer the second question first. I think I might have showed my hand for uh, earlier. I, I like oozes. <laughs> I like your gelatinous cubes. I like black puddings. Mm-hmm. I like throwing oozes uh, uh, in dungeons, uh, mm-hmm. just because a lot of times you you don't expect them. Uh, well, I mean, you do expect them, but you don't. You your don't player, your characters don't always uh, know that they're there. Were you a big uh, so they're fun. Quest fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, the and again uh, for the for the number of rooms it depends it goes back to the ecology um so if you've got this war band they're going to have several several rooms and chambers and things like that to to hold all their number uh mm-hmm. but you might have a single cavern you know with uh, a a level that's just a single cavern that's holding your dragon or or some other behemoth intelligent behemoth or something like that because they're there they don't want to be bothered uh right you know they might have they might have a couple lieutenants hanging around or something like that to to soften the blow if the pcs you know jump in there mm-hmm. but uh you know so it varies depending on the type of monsters that you're looking at um but ge- i guess generally speaking eight it seems like a good number to have uh because you have uh you know you can get a level done in one or two sessions that way <laughs> yeah no that makes a lot of sense that makes a lot of sense and i think oozes are a, a tragically underutilized uh under uh, underutilized creature uh <laughs> gosh yes 
So <laughs> someone uh, asked, you like oozes, did you do uh, the second level of the Scarlet Citadel section? <laughs> no, I did not, but <laughs> I, I appreciate that level. <laughs> <laughs> more oozes. We all need more oozes. <laughs> Um, you know what? We're already talking about monsters, so let's let's get into it. You know, you uh, you, uh, you mm, sorry, gosh, my brain just crapped out on me right there. Um, you created uh, some new monsters, some specific dungeon den- uh, denizens. Uh, yes. For uh, uh, in this book, uh, <laughs> not <laughs> Ben Eastman mimic oozes. What is that even? <laughs> what is that? What is a mimic ooze? <laughs> What is a mimic ooze? You tell me right now what a mimic ooze is. <laughs> but <laughs> disregarding that, um, good. So, what are some of the the dungeon denizens that that you've made for the book? Uh, well, uh, as a matter of fact, um, I didn't do any mimics. Uh, I think Brian 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 Suskin was a little a little sad about that. But you know, I don't I don't want to get I don't want to I don't want to get into that space. But also, um, I don't know if you, <laughs> if anybody has followed what I the, the monsters I do typically uh, gravitate towards. I don't have any drakes in this mm. uh, in this set of monsters, but I do have an ooze. Um, good, good. And it's an ooze that likes it's it it can solidify itself, and what it does is it clings on the ceiling. And it's, you know, uses its tremor sense to detect when something's uh, below it. And it says, all right, bonsai. And it uh, solidifies into stone and squashes whatever's underneath it. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's so good. Because <laughs> it's so, it, I feel like it's something that like, you know, you could describe that room to a player, right? Like you walk into the cavern, and as you're, you, know, you you move your torchlight around, you spot the glistening, like you know, uh, uh, like like a, f- a fluid like surface of an ooze, like climbing above. You're like, oh, it's fine, they're up there. We don't have to worry <laughs> about them. And then they turn into a rock and drop on you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> oh my goodness. I I will be using that. I will be using that. Okay. And I'm sorry to my players in the future. <laughs> Are there any other and, uh, that you want to share with us? Um, well, I mentioned during the Ask Me uh, Anything um, <laughs> a while ago. Uh, I have the uh, I have a construct that has the um, ruthlessness. Well, I like to believe it has the ruthlessness of Dalek and the fastidiousness of C-3PO. Uh, a very interesting combination (laughs) and uh yeah so basically it's going around its job is to make sure the dungeon is spotless it's clean Mm -hmm. uh so you know all the blood all the you know detritus whatever that ends up in the dungeon its job is to clean all that up uh so of course you know it's going to view invading uh or intruding uh player characters as you know just another tra- a bit of trash that has to remove the from the dungeon. It's got to be gone. Hey, you're not <laughs> supposed to be here. <laughs> That's really, and I'm 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 imagining a scenario where the players don't know that one of these is in the dungeon, and then they like backtrack to a previous room, and like all of the stuff that they had left there, like the bodies or whatever, all <laughs> gone, and <laughs> but them still not, the dungeon cleaner has already moved on to another room, and so they're just like, what has happened? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> That's so good. A lot of, <laughs> two monsters that you've made that really just seem like they're good for messing with players. <laughs> <laughs> and their expectation which i love I, I, I might i might do that occasionally with my <laughs> monsters <laughs> really because i'm looking at some of the names of some of these and there's one of them that i want to know about the walking sarcophagus what what's what's the oh, deal with yeah. the walking sarcophagus that one was that one was fun um so that's oh wow yeah it's it's basically this incorporeal undead uh-huh 
who who realizes, hey, I'm kind of vulnerable being out in the open, and has the ability to manipulate. <laughs> try that again. Has the ability to manipulate stone, so basically, it can surround itself in a shell and just kind of toddle along. Um, and it, it's basically along the lines of somebody who's it's it's an undead creature who or a creature that died entombed mm -hmm. you know they were alive and they were entombed and they came back and their vengeance is basically tied to whatever whatever they were entombed in yeah so they take it with them uh and uh so yeah so that's yeah that's the deal with that guy that's so good it <laughs> <laughs> two questions from the switch first question in regards to the walking sarcophagus uh, uh wtf and then the second <laughs> question is how does it walk <laughs> uh uh not not well not very quickly but it's <laughs> it's kind of the it's kind of a uh, maybe a little bit of the cartoonish you know animated way you know it's gonna yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, just like that it, it waddles yes <laughs> <laughs> that's so good so it's not it's not real it's not really stealthy at all <laughs> you're gonna see it and hear it coming <laughs> <laughs> that's probably more intimidating <laughs> hearing it <laughs> trundling along the <laughs> oh my God. and oh yeah that was the other thing it, it forms a it forms an opening and basically its whole whole deal is grab whatever pull it in drain it of drain it of life and then you know move on to the next oh, thing so, so cool. yeah that's i i cannot wait for this book <laughs> i and all the fun toys it's gonna give me <laughs> this is so good uh another question does it kill you by oh yeah no yeah does it kill you by closing you into the uh, sarcophagus and suffocating you Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Suffocation and 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 basically draining your so energy. Good. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And then you know it creates uh, uh, a a incorporeal undead from from you know the dead the the creatures that it kills. So so then you have another thing we have they to fight. Also become walking sarcophaguses because they died mm -hmm. entombed. No, they just become free floating uh, incorporeal like undead. And, yeah. Okay. That's okay. okay. Mm. <laughs> it's like hey, well, hey just an idea for any gms out yeah. there maybe they do just become another walking sarcophagus <laughs> and go to look for something to entomb itself in <laughs> i kind of like the idea of like a sh like a kind of shy one that's like i like this this is comfortable this is the last thing i remember <laughs> is being entombed and like this is just right like, I, this feels good for I, me. I don't want to make any I don't want to make anybody angry and, and beat up my my home, so I, I won't I won't bother you. A walking sarcophagus in a weighted blanket, <laughs> just like I just want to be I I want to feel be I want to feel held right now <laughs> in my <Yeah>. own death. <laughs> and it's it somehow be, befriended some kind of undead cat or something like that. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm and the cat sitting on sitting <laughs> on top of it. Ah, oh, now I've been. I now I'm endeared into this, <laughs> into, into this walking sarcophagus. <laughs> oh my god, I love this. Um, so good. Uh, uh, we are running out of time here. Uh, okay. So, uh, thank you so much, Mike. This has been such a joy yeah. talking to you again. Um, I enjoyed it too. Thank you. Yeah. No. Of course. Of course. Um. Uh, before we head out, is there anything that you would like to let the people know? Any place they can find uh, you or your work if they're more uh, interested in your very, very good thoughts and ideas around game design and, 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 and monster ecology and all of this good stuff? Um, well, let's see. Uh, again, I, I appear occasionally on the Cobalt Press blog. Um, and uh, don't talk about a lot of stuff on social media, except other than, you know, hey, I'm working on this book, or hey, look, check out this Kickstarter, or, you know, but you can find me on Facebook, I think it's Mike, Mike Wellum, and um, uh, I, I'm on Blue Sky, MD Wellum, uh, but I've not really been good about keeping up with that account. Uh, finally, um, I do a Monster a Week, and it's on a site called... Uh, 
mythopoeicrambling.wordpress.com. Can you spell that for me so I can put it in the chat yes. for everyone? M Y T H O P O E I C R A M B L I N G rambling dot wordpress dot com. And um, I am going to I I do a Pathfinder one, Pathfinder two, and fifth edition version of uh, Monster a week, and I will be soon transitioning to Tales of the Valley. Yes. <laughs> As as many people will be, hopefully, <laughs> including myself. Uh, but thank you so much, Mike. This has been, a, again, such a joy. And thank you all for listening. Uh, I hope, again, if you weren't already sold, I hope this sells you on it because <laughs> I am, I personally am so, so excited to get my hands on all of this <laughs> all of this <laughs> and my players i can only say sorry to so uh <laughs> thank you all again so much uh, uh uh don't forget go back in on kickstarter if you haven't already um there's two weeks left and so hey go, go get, get on it. that yeah go get it yeah um as always, I've been your host, Kendrick or Kendo, whichever you prefer. You can find me everywhere on the internet that matters at Kendo Makes Films. Uh, and you can find me here every week, uh, uh, especially next week, right before Cobalt Con, uh, 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 2 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. PT, 3 p.m. Eastern, whatever, <laughs> wherever. Um, and I, yes, I believe that's it. So. Don't forget to go out, eat enough food, drink enough water, get enough sleep, and take care of yourself. Because self-care is very important, especially in the times we're living in right now. So don't forget to love yourself and everyone around you. See you all. Bye. Bye.